Welcome to Talk the Talk, Rio Grande Valley Stars. This is our first episode for season two of Talk the Talk. That's why we have the balloons. We're celebrating season two after a very successful uh, season one. You've seen uh, uh, different professionals and, and disciplines from, from the valley being interviewed, from actors to models to professional boxers, uh, singers, people who are making a positive difference and making the, the valley well known throughout the world. And our intention for season two and beyond is to continue showcasing these talented and creative and outstanding individuals. And uh, for the first episode of season two, we are honored to have an amazing uh, guest uh, that we're going to interview. He is Omar Figueroa Jr. Pantelita, professional boxer from Westlaco. And we appreciate you being here, taking time off your very busy schedules. Thank you very much. Right now it's not that busy. I just got finished with the fight, so I had I have time. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, the whole valley is very very proud of you and everything you've done, representing the valley so well. And uh, how did this get started? How did you get started in this career? Tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, uh, anything you want to tell us. Your about age. How you well, I'm 29 years old. I was uh, born in Westlake. Uh, I lived in Mexico my first four and some years before I had a transfer for school. So, um, you know, my, my Mexican roots are really ingrained in me. And so that's why I love the Valley because it's so close to Mexico and I you get the best of both worlds, you know. Uh, but being that my family's from Mexico, my dad uh, had a, I guess, very liberal childhood and then young adult growing up so he was always out in the streets and you know people always picked fights with him and then when he moved over to the valley from Mexico he was bullied a lot because of you know the whole racism and whatnot so being called a wetback and all that so he had to learn how to fight to defend himself and so he didn't want me to go through the same thing so he taught me how to fight and you know started teaching me this discipline which he loved and he wishes he would have been a boxer um, so that's basically how I got started, pretty much self-defense. And I've seen pictures of you as a little kid with him boxing, yeah. right? And I think now your kids are kind of doing the same thing, right? Sometimes they, well, I've yeah, seen videos I mean, and pictures. My dad puts some, uh, you know, gets them in the ring and, and tries to teach him a little bit, which is good. I'm not against it. I just, I wish they wouldn't have to go down the same route that I did. And boxing's not an easy sport, but if this is what they choose to do, well then I'm going to make sure that they know exactly what it entails. At what age did you start boxing? Uh, I mean, I've, well, I've been training since I like, have used a reason, but uh, my like actual training was when I was six years old. Wow. Uh, do you want to say hi to your kids? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, my my daughter Sophia, my son Omar the third, and then my youngest uh, Lana. Um, if they ever watch this, yeah, I'll sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, a great show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be sharing it on Facebook and different social YouTube. media outlets and YouTube. So, uh, yeah. so tell us more about your first projects, your first fights, uh, in more detail. How I was mean, I don't really remember. I was seven years old, so... Did you start in the ring or outside the ring at school? In the ring. No, I ne I, you know, I've never been much of a troll, troll maker outside of the, the ring. I That's one thing that my parents always made sure that I learned the difference between you know, fighting and, and boxing and whatnot. So, uh, plus I've always been scared to hurt my hands, especially after having injured them so much in, in boxing with wraps and everything. So I just, I am definitely afraid of fighting outside of the ring because I'm, I'm you know, I'm pretty sure I'd mess them up. So I always, I always knew my, my limits, I guess, when it came to that. But, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I've been doing this for as long as I can remember. I, this is, this is what I do. It's been her life, mm -hmm. pretty much. Tell us a little about some of, about your first fights. Where did you, where was your first fight? My, you started locally and then you went to uh, No, my first. Well, yeah. Well, in Durao, my first fight. I remember was a guy that was maybe like six, seven years older than me. So we all thought he was around my age, and he ended up being a lot older than than we all expected. And I ended up beating him in my first fight. So I had I don't know how many fights in Mexico before I, I actually had a fight here. Was how many fights did you have to go through before or amateur fights before you went pro? Uh, I didn't really keep count, but I think I had like almost. I'm pretty sure I had over 200 fights in Mexico, and 
around 60 some fights here, so I, I had around 300 fights total before well, I went pro. And, and what's needed to, to like be doing it at a professional level? Like how many victories do you need? Or no, yeah, anyone can go pro. Okay, there's no set requirement. I mean, you just have to pass the physical and the drug test and, and all that, and you can pretty much become a professional boxer. And, and right now you have uh, all victories, right? Is it 29? 20... 28. 28. 28. You're 29 years old, right? <laughs> okay, well, I got the numbers confused. 28 victories in 29 years. Wow. Well, is there a lot of pressure for you to maintain a perfect record like that? Of course. I mean, just being a boxer and, and being in the sport itself is, is, is enough pressure as it is. But, you know, when you're at the level that I'm at and you want to maintain yourself there, it takes obviously an extra, so much more effort to to maintain yourself at that at that stature and to compete with these other guys that are at that level as well. So it's not just, you know, it's like they say, oh, the easy part is getting there, the hard part is maintaining. And I mean, it is especially because I've had so many injuries, it makes it that much more harder for me to, to stay at that top level. And how important has been uh, the family support in your career? Did everybody in your family, your mom included, support you from the beginning? Uh, was your mom kind of protective, as a lot of moms are, or how was your experience with that? Yeah, I mean, as, as far as I can remember, my mom has always been supportive, and uh, she saw that I liked it, so she, you know, she pushed me to, and that's one thing about my parents that I love and, and that I want to do with my kids is, you know, I chose to be in boxing, and I want to be in boxing, so they made me give it 100%. They never let me half, uh, go halfway on anything. So that's one thing that, that I look forward to doing with my kiddos as well, you know? It's like, if you're gonna do something, I don't care what it is, but you're gonna do it 100%. And you're gonna overachieve, you're gonna be the best at what you do, I don't care what it is. You know, and that's, that's something that, I, that I've done with my life and everything that I've done, I've, I've given 110%, and that's, I think that's a recipe to, to success. It doesn't matter what it is, you know? Is it like one month that you really, really have to be disciplined, or how, how long? It's a while, well, I like to give myself two months. Two just. Months just to make sure, but uh, normally the camps are supposed to be like six to eight weeks. And, and recently you had a, a fight and a victory, so congratulations mm -hmm. once again. Uh, can you tell us about this last fight? Like, how was it? How did you prepare? How was your experience? I mean, it, just like any other fight, I mean, I hadn't fought since uh, July of 2017, I believe, so that always makes it harder being away from the ring for so long. I've been away from training for so long, but, you know, like I said, the injuries that I've had have kept me away from the gym and from the training in general. So it makes it that much more hard, harder to go from being an average Joe to having to become this professional elite, you know, boxer. Okay. So, I mean, it, it has its challenges, but at the same time, it pushes me further than, than what the norm is. So, and I like that. I like, I like a challenge. And, you know, something always goes wrong, goes wrong in camp, and you just have to adapt and overcome. And you know, that's that's the life of a boxer, I feel. Yeah. So, how do you prepare for a camp? So, every time you got a, a new challenger, what do you do to adapt to his style? Well, basically, I don't I don't really do much to adapt to their style because I'm going with a weird style. So, I just make sure that I am uh, personally 100% and let them adjust to me. I see. And uh, your nickname is Panterita, right? Can, can you tell us how, how that began? Yeah, I mean, uh, with the, the Westico, the, the mascot for the, for the high school, well, at least, at least back in the day when I started, uh, you know, 20, 22 years ago now, uh, was the Panthers. That was the only high school that was there. So my cousins played for the Panthers, so I'd miss every Friday to go watch them play football. And so every Monday that I went back to to the gym, my coach was like, because my dad, my dad always coached me, but he wasn't my like main coach sometimes. So the coach that I had at the time, he would ask me every Monday, he was like, where were you on Friday? And it would be the same thing. It's like, oh, we went to watch the Panthers. You know, so one of those times he was just like, ah, que panterita me saliste? And it stuck. It stuck. That's awesome. Uh, do, do you consider yourself a role model to, to, to kids? But because I know a lot of, most of them look up to you and, and I know that sometimes you go to the schools and you talk to them. You also uh, give back to the community with, with mm -hmm. like a total drive. Uh, how uh, responsible do you feel as a role model to, to be sending a positive message to kids? 
Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm human, and and I've made my fair share of mistakes. But I mean, I, I am a role model. They see me that way. If they if they look at the positive things in my life that I've done and the things that I've achieved, being from the valley and being one of the only one from the valley that has achieved the level of success that I've had, at least in my sport, and you know, many other sports too. But um, I do kind of see myself as a role model, especially because I have children now. So I would want them to walk and follow my footsteps, obviously, without the mistakes that I've made. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it is my responsibility being the, in the position that, I am, that I'm in. But at the same time, I feel like it's the responsibility of the parents to guide and, and teach their kids the right way, because I never really looked up to anybody. I didn't have anybody to look up to, at least that I really cared enough for to look up to, to them. So I took after my parents and followed my parents' advice as, as best as possible and, and forged my own path. And, and we were going to ask you that as well. Who are your role models? And growing up and even up to today, who do you admire uh, in your fields? Uh, was it no, I've also never, your father? Or who do you think your role model? I never, I never really paid attention to anybody else's life. I feel like my life was hard enough as, as, it, as it is to, to keep up with and, and to do the right things and, and to keep moving forward and advance in my career that I just decided to focus on myself. You know, I, I did watch other people fight, Oscar de Loya, you know, um, Juan Manuel Marquez and, and uh, Mario Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales. I mean, but as far as actually like Role models, I, I I can't say that that I. Really so so how do you stay motivated? Like what keeps you wakes you up in the morning, keeps you going, getting ready for that fight? Like keep that fire lit. I mean, twenty eight and zero, you've got to have some kind of confidence. Does that do you maintain that confidence? Like oh, this is an easy fight, or do you take them as like this guy can take me out? How do you approach the motivation like yourself, like trying to. Yeah, like that, better, just better to be better than, better than it was the last time, and, and that's that's a thing. But I, I feel like boxing in itself is a very selfish sport. Um, you know, I love the fact that it's only me in the ring, fighting my opponent. Uh, I feel like that's the, most, the the purest form of competition when it's you against the other person. And, you know, every, everything else, everything is, is kind of equaled out when it, when it comes to, you know, the weight and all that. And, uh, you know, it's like football. I mean, you don't know if you're going to go up against a guy that's almost seven feet tall, that weighs 400 pounds, you know, and, and that's why I decided not to continue with football or basketball or anything like that. And so, uh, I don't know, to me, that's the, the purest form of, of competition. It's just you against somebody else and yeah. see who the best is. And I think that's great advice for all of our viewers in, in any discipline. That you should never compete with anybody else, but your competition should always be yourself and trying to become a better person each and every time. Absolutely. So tell us some of the obstacles that you faced inside and outside the ring. Where do I begin? I mean, life in general is, is hard enough as it is, you know? And then having a discipline like boxing, the injuries, the weight, the wanting to enjoy life, wanting to act like a normal person, human being after doing it for so long, you know, it, everything takes its toll. And, and uh, you gotta give time for everything. I've learned that the best thing you can do is balance everything out. You know, try to have some time for fun. Try to have some fun, some time for work. Try to have some time for seriousness and joking and whatnot. So everything is that uh, the yin and the yang. Yeah. And how have you handled your fame? Because I know uh, you're very down to earth. You're a nice guy. You give back to the community, uh, even though you're well known and you're famous. How do you think you've handled that so you haven't uh, become egotistical or I don't that los pies en la tierra, as they say in Spanish. You know, so yeah. It's like you're well grounded, so how do you do it to, to maintain yourself humble and in that level, despite your success in your fame? I honestly don't know how to answer that question. I just I don't see myself as better than anybody. I just I know the work that I've put into what I, what I do and it's not like I was born better than everybody else. I've had to work so hard for so long to be where I'm at and that's the only difference between me and anybody. You know, the work that I put in and that's about it. Uh, I was telling my class that this week uh, in lecture that people are not born successful. Yeah. Basically through hard work and dedication, right? 
everybody can be a success person. And I wasn't born with the time to build around my ways. You know, I had to I had to work for that, and I had to fight, and I had to you know sacrifice and and go through hell and back, and and that's why I'm where I'm at. And that's the difference between me and anybody. And that's that's one thing that I tell you know a lot of kids. Say, oh man, like I wish I could be like you. And I'm like, no, you don't. You wish you could be better. And I'm like, and the only way you're going to accomplish that is by working harder than I did. And if you can work harder than I did, well, then you should be better than I did. And I'm like, but you got to be willing to sacrifice. You know, I didn't start going out. I didn't start drinking. I didn't start doing any of that. So I was in my 20s. You know, in high school, I didn't do any of that. I was, I was too busy working. And my dad would tell me, you know, we'd be at the gym on Friday night. And my friends were out. And, um, you know, my dad was like, I know you hate this. I know you, you would rather be, you know, out with your friends or whatever. He's like, but you know, five, six years from now, you're gonna thank me, and you're gonna, you're gonna look back to these times and and be glad that you were here working instead of you know partying. And I mean, here I am. So. Yeah. I know psychology is very important. I love psychology. Mm -hmm. I'm a professor in psychology, and in the ring, in, in your sport, obviously you have to be disciplined when it comes to eating healthy and, and exercising. But the mental is also important in the ring, right? So how can you use psychology in the ring? to prepare and be uh, successful in the world? I don't know how exactly I would say I apply it. I, I mean, because I don't know the, the correct terminology for what people like, like you might, because you actually studied this. But to me, do, do you think about uh, past successes, or are you thinking positive? Uh, how does your mind It's work basically, that? yeah, just basically, basically positive thoughts. Um, I go in there knowing that I've been through hell and back many times, that I've, I've dealt with way bigger things in life, way harder things. I mean, this is what I've been doing my whole life. You know, when, when I'm in the ring, this, that's what I think of, you know, this is what I've been doing my whole life. I've been preparing for this exact moment. I'm like, this is the easiest part of everything. You know, this is the easiest part of what I do. It's like, you as a, you know, as a student, you study your whole time in school for your test. So that should be the easiest part of what you're doing. You know, that's what you're preparing your whole life for, or whatever. And so, to me, it's more of like just reassuring myself that I have what it takes, that I'm well prepared, that I'm, you know, that everything's okay, and and that I'm there to, you know, give it my all, kill or be killed. You know, that's, yeah. I, I know it took a drastic turn there, but and it's worked for you. But yeah, okay. so that's the thing. It's like I'm. My thing is, I'm, I'm getting out of the ring with my hand raised. So whatever it takes. I think my biggest achievement just happened not too long ago, and that's when I got my mental state, I feel, to a good place, to a place that I wanted to be. Like I said, the success, there have been hundreds before me that had that success. Uh, the money, there are literally billions of people that have, you know, money in this world, and like the cars, and Donald Trump. And, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, to me, I feel like I'm content with myself, I'm content with the things that I've achieved in life, I'm content with the person that I am. I feel like I'm a good person, you know, I try to help people as much as possible, I'm genuine, I don't try to screw anyone over, and uh, at the end of the day, I feel like I am a positive energy in this world, and that's, I feel like my ultimate goal was to, to be something positive. To what do you see in the future for yourself, future goals that you have? <sighs> well, um, keep being satisfied with myself, keep being happy with myself, uh, get my kids to that same point, get as many people as I can to that point, you know, by either sharing my story or, or giving them advice or to, you know, whatever they need. Uh, but as far as, you know, hopefully open up uh, some businesses and... and uh, you have some already, right? Some. Yeah, I have a couple of businesses and um, my family. Well, I did it for my family. You know, they, they have them, they run them. Um, I'm building a house in Mexico where I'm planning to retire in San Miguel Allende. So hopefully that gets done and I get to retire there and spend the rest of my life in that beautiful place. So that's I pretty much take it easy, man. <laughs> I, I've been going so hard for so long and I. Service. You know, yes. Are you thinking of retirement soon? Um, well, I mean, boxing, you can't go that long, you know. Um, maybe by the time I'm 35, if God permits, uh, yeah, I, I'll be looking into retirement. Let's see. So have a few more years. Yeah, yeah, a few more years. Okay. Yeah. A few more victories. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> How long ago? That's the plan. <laughs> awesome. Oh.
Right. Any closing remark for our viewers? Any last message that you would like to? Just as always, you know, thank you guys for for following my career and my life and and having my back and having your support. It's an honor to have you. You represent the Valley um, very well. You know, to have the, you know the world class championship fighter who's a role model to other people. It's an honor to have you here. Where can people find you on yes. social media? Just Google my name, Mike Figueroa Jr. on pretty much everything. Facebook. Facebook. Well, thank you very much for being our first guest of season two of Talk the Talk, Real Grande Valley Stars. I'm Alex Arabia, along with Isaac Medina, and we'll see you next week. Stay good.